Russ, we're going to talk all about your backup, which I hope that this is a compliment to you, but your backup to me is um, more, I'm drawn more to your backup even than your lead playing, and I love your lead playing. But your backup to me, uh, I just just get swept in Mm. and enthralled. And you make the right choices. Mm. When you go to play something, because there, you know, there's there's just a myriad of things that we can choose to play, right? That, that and don't fit. That don't fit, yeah. and it seems to me that every time I hear you go and make one of those decisions, I say that was the right one. Mm-hmm. That was the right one. That was the right one. And so yeah. I couldn't really pay a picker a higher compliment than saying you make really great choices. Um, so. Yeah. You know, you play really perfectly and your tone's great and all that, but to me what impresses me most is just the decisions that you make. So, I mean, it you really have to be mindful about that. And since I've moved to town, one thing that has helped me is watching really good fiddle players. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the person that comes to mind is Stuart Duncan. Yes. Watching him and sometimes musically, he won't say a darn thing. He'll sit there holding his fiddle, letting everybody else and then when he steps up to play a fill, it's exactly what needs to right. happen, and then he gives it space, mm-hmm. and it's you he does know, a lot of fiddle holding. He, if you watch Stuart, I mean, he, he does, does a lot of he does a lot of that little strum with his finger. Yep. And then when he steps up and yep. plays something, it, you cry. Yep. It's just it's perfect. Yep. But you know, there's other guys that take other approaches mm-hmm. um, that do it really well too. Yeah. Oh you yeah. Know? Um, but anyway, I just wanted to tell you, you make really great decisions on your backup and. I'm excited to dive into this. Just like we did with the lead, I've got mm-hmm. some headlines that I think describe okay. your backup plan that I want to uh, showcase. Um, the first one I want to call tone travel. Mm. It's, a, it's a joke. It's kind of like time travel. <laughs> except it's tone travel. And what I mean by that is, again, your, uh, your attention to detail when it comes to dynamics yeah. and tone. Mm-hmm. And uh, what I want to do is I want to show, um, show some... Um, footage here and have people watch your right hand, yeah. watch your pick hand. Uh, we're going to listen to a um, video of Molly and Tim Brooks, and I just want you to focus, folks, on his right hand and see what it does. Whoa. And back. Let's watch that one more time. Down by the bridge, now up by the neck, and back. Okay, so I want you to talk to us about that. that. Mm -hmm. First, I want you to demonstrate where we don't have the rest of the band playing. Can you just demonstrate what it sounds like to, to have those two positions? doing that um, you're really kind of monitoring how much pressure you're applying to the head and as my hand um, slides forward I'm trying to touch the head as lightly as possible because that really lets the the Uh, note really swell and like a bell exactly and the harder you're pressing down the more everything's it's gonna be a little bit harsher and I mean down by the bridge that's fine yeah Um, and that's how you're doing it why are you doing it? Dynamics. Yeah. Dynamics. And it's it just, you know, you're, you're, that's your paintbrush. And you're, you know, it just, it takes my part of the band and I'm trying to make it supportive, it musical, and I'm trying to make it blend with everything else. And when you're playing behind a singer like that, you know, having a nice, light, warm, round touch sometimes will aid what they're yeah. singing. And it just makes it more interesting. Yeah. So can you play some of that up the next stuff, but don't move your hand up mm. and, and see what it's like? It's going to be hard for you to do. It, it really is. It's a lot harsher. It's a lot harsher. And behind a singer, like if you're playing Lonesome Road Blues and you're soloing yeah. up there, 
you might keep your hand down exactly. here by the bridge, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely, it's not that your hand has to be in one place or the other right. for those notes to sound acceptable. It's the context that determines exactly. if they're acceptable. Exactly. So if somebody's singing, yeah. then you don't want to be stabbing them with a knife. Right. Exactly. Okay. And I also notice that you will typically play less notes per measure mm. when you go into that mode mm -hmm. than when you're not. It's, it's like the notes that you do allow to go through are only the most important. Mm -hmm. You actually just did that um, where you're going up and you're just dun, 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 dun. Yeah. And I'm just mm -hmm. hearing a note like every three eighth notes. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. you're, it's like you're playing just, you're doing this ghost roll, mm -hmm. but only one of the notes is coming right. through. Again, just dynamics and tone travel. Let's learn one of these, um, one of these licks. We're going to go back to Molly and Tim books, mm -hmm. and there's a G7 lick. Whoa. 